They used to be on street corners and at gas stations all over America, but pay phones have been disappearing from the national landscape at the rate of 10% a year. And that's why. No big surprise, <laughs> right, as to why, yeah. because uh, research shows 91% of American adults have one of these, maybe even two. I have two. So will <laughs> pay phones soon be a thing of the past? Our Derek Thomas joins us with what he found. Going, going, but not gone. The payphone is still around, but instead of being nearly everywhere, the payphone picks its spots and carves out its niche. No, no, I'm in a phone booth. I'm, I'm just a block away. I'm in the street. Robert Redford is a CIA analyst in the movie Three Days of the Condor. He is reaching out to his superiors for assistance on a payphone. The utility and the omnipresence of the payphone and booth has been documented in cinema over and over again. I'm in a phone booth. Get off the phone. Don't even think about leaving that booth. Get off the phone. Tippy Hedren takes shelter in the movie The Bird. Despite the cultural currency the payphone carries, it is fast disappearing thanks to the cell phone. In the year 2000, there were 2.2 million payphones in the country. Today, there are about 400,000. The decline in payphones is graphic at Indianapolis International Airport. There are only 13 payphones on the grounds. There are over 140 in the old airport. We have about half and half, but post-security and pre-security. The most popular ones seem to be down in the baggage claim area where people tend to have maybe some extra time uh, to kill waiting for a luggage and, and may realize they need to make a call that requires uh, a payphone. Kathy Korn never uses a payphone. I don't even know how much it costs anymore. I mean, I don't, don't even use a payphone at all. Don't even think about a payphone. <laughs> Cost 50 cents here. Is it really? Okay. <laughs> no, I just, I thought they were all gone, really. What okay. does the future generation think? Do you think payphones have outlived their usefulness? Yes. And you don't think you'll be using any payphones in the near future? No. Despite Meehan's pessimistic view, at this church camp in Fortville, this payphone is a staple. CenturyLynx owns 80 payphones in the state, mostly in rural areas. You might have children here that uh, don't have a, a wireless device. They would, have, uh, they would have the ability to use the payphone to, uh, to call their parents or whoever they need to reach. During certain times, a phone has to be locked up because some children are pranksters. It is a challenge. We have had more than once uh, the police show up because somebody's called 911. Pay phones are still prominent and in demand in places where cell phones are not allowed. That place is behind bars in jail. The jail has 412 pay phones. Last year, inmates of the jail spent 11 million minutes talking on those phones. It allows the inmates to talk to friends and family, but we also monitor the phone calls uh, because we don't want, uh, you know, we don't want uh, inappropriate enterprise going on from inside the jail. Hopefully, uh... And on the outside, there are some people who cling to payphone tradition. Phones are still posted at some inner city gas stations. Therese Palmore, who has had some financial setbacks, says he might use a payphone three times a day. It's a lot cheaper than using or paying for a contract cell phone with AT&T or Verizon or Sprint when it can run up to hundreds of dollars a month. There are fewer and fewer people who think like Paul Moore, but they don't react like Robert De Niro in the movie Goodfellas. From doing this report, I've come to the conclusion that payphones will always have a presence at the airport. Cell phone batteries die, and when you need to make a call for a ride, the old payphone will be a friend you can rely on. Derek Thomas, RTV6.